I think, yeah, we just, okay. <laughs> as much so, time we spent on the house, we could have bought it for 10000 well, I'll let you explain what we've done here because, uh. Well, I don't know that I know what we've done here. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian over here at the Little Orchard Farm. Welcome to today's video. So glad that you guys have chosen to join us today. We've got quite a bit of activity to do. Uh, we have uh, we have one big, huge project that I'm going to want to share with you. Uh, I'll share a little bit about it today um, as Dylan, my son, Karen, my wife, uh, and me have been working uh, on a permanent structure for the orchard, um, a permanent fencing structure. So I'm going to share with, with you what we're going to be doing with that, uh, at least kick it off. Uh, it's a long-term project. Uh, we've still got several weeks of work still left to do on it, uh, but we're doing the prep work uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I want to share some of that with you. All right, so one of the things that we wanted to do, and I, I've shared this with you guys in the past, is uh, on our orchard, we have, we have a temporary netting up around the orchard, and and we want to do something a little bit more permanent, right? Uh, uh, that that all is wonderful for the short term, uh, but eventually, uh, uh, livestock, deer, and and other little four-legged critters will eventually find their way in and start nibbling on our orchard trees. And so we want a way to protect those uh, and isolate um, uh, to where that they are, uh, they're safeguarded. So uh, we thought about doing um, uh, some sort of, you know, fencing where you've got no climb fencing uh, with a combination of maybe hot wire, things of that nature to kind of keep some of the neighbors passing cattle out and, and, and to discourage the deer. Well, what we decided to do was because we have such a huge amount of pine trees, as you can see, all of those are pines, every one of them. Uh, and they're thick, it is dense in there. I mean, there are just tons and tons of pine trees. And so we, what we decided to do was to thin those out a little bit. I think it's healthier for the, for the ecology and, and utilize some of that resources that we have on our property instead of going and spending money on fencing material, which is incredibly expensive right now. And so what we decided to do is we decided to mill our own logs. And so we've spent the last couple of weeks knocking down, oh my goodness, touch up. knocking down a couple of trees. Uh, and one tree will yield us about three logs. Uh, so those are, and these are all 10 foot logs. Uh, we wanted to get a seven foot high fence or somewhere in that neighborhood uh, for the deer. Uh, and so this will allow us to sink it three foot in the ground and, and then be about uh, seven feet proud of the ground. And so, uh, and so what Dylan has been doing and, and we've been doing kind of over the last couple of weeks is debarking these, these trees. And so we've had, uh, I went to one of the mail malls, uh, big box stores and grabbed a, uh, a de-icer uh, is what it is, a four foot long de-icer. And so it has a beveled edge. I'll show you that real quick because it has turned out to be an awesome, awesome tool uh, to use in, uh, in debarking these trees. Um, pine trees have a, there you go. so purchased, purchased this bad boy. It's got, like I said, a beveled edge to it. Looks like a big paint scraper. Um, pine trees have this have this skin around them. Really, really unique. I, I love it. Uh, but essentially, 
this white material, and I wish I had done some research so I could maybe give you a little bit more technical scientific term for it. But uh, but this this skin is what is, sits between the log and the bark, and so once you have scraped um, scraped that clean, uh, or or you know got you a good uh, a good scrape down the uh, down one side of the log. It really is just skinning it. It'll it'll peel right off for you, and so uh, and so we've that's what we've done. We've been spending some time uh, uh, preparing our own logs, and we're probably uh, that's about two dozen logs right there, um, and so we're probably going to need another probably another 10 to 12 logs, probably another dozen logs to go around the orchard. And then we'll do the exact same thing around the garden uh, to enclose the garden. Um, and so we've got, we got still quite a bit of work to do. This has been like a three week process of getting these down, uh, these, um, some of these worked on periodically. And then we've got to come back and take some of these thinner the thinner ones, which will be used as our rails. And so we will have, um, you know, two to three inch uh, diameter rails that will run between the posts. And that's gonna be a, a, a much, uh, it's gonna take a lot more. Um, we figured, if we figured, um, uh, eight to ten feet in between posts and I wanted to see what the durability of a ten foot section of this looks like how, how durable it will be uh, if I don't get a lot of sag on it we may try to run it at ten feet um, eight feet probably is the best you know obviously the recommended uh, distance between them uh, so if we run it at eight feet um, then you figure on one side alone it's a hundred it's gonna be about hundred and ten feet so do the math, eight feet into 120, it's gonna be several poles. Um, and so we've got a lot of work to do, not only on cutting these down, and there's a lot of these, a lot of these thinner diameter trees that are in that thicket. And again, I think by thinning some of those thinner ones out, it gives the other ones an opportunity really to grow uh, at a much bigger, more dynamic rate. Uh, and so that's something we wanna do. And by the way, we've got, tons of the pine trees all over the property they're everywhere everywhere in fact they're even in thickets where we have some hardwoods and i would love for our hardwoods to be able to flourish continue to grow uh, another one another tree that we have that is almost a nuisance so to speak because it's everywhere are the cedar trees and you can even see these all over here those are all cedars and these are all cedar logs that we have here and so I'm going to try to do some wood milling on some of the cedar trees on our land and we'll replace those trees. So we'll come in and we'll cut down a cedar tree and in its stead, we will put another type of tree, maybe an, a, a, another hardwood, maybe a nut tree of some sort, a hazelnut, something like that to, uh, to replace it so that we, uh, we kind of keep our ecology, the, the, the environment flourishing. We don't want to have 50 acre flat field. That's not the goal. Uh, we want to enjoy the beauty that God has get granted us, and we want to manage and steward it correctly. If you go up into this thicket up here, there are a ton of trees that are laid over. I mean, a bunch of them that the weather, uh, that uh, pine beetles, have. you know, they, they've gotten into them. And so by managing this effectively, then we create a much more healthy ecosystem for the wildlife, for us, um, and it just makes for a better, a better, a better farm. <clears throat> All right. So now the surprise. So we're, we've been trying to get a, a barn built on the property, or at least get the planning started, um, getting some quotes and and um, uh, getting some ideas together. And we've reached out to three or four different companies for um, for some different ideas and, and quotes. And we're running into not only, I guess, some prices that may be outside our budget, 
but also uh, the amount of time that it's going to take for them to get started. Um, we had one one barn uh, barn builder tell us that it was going to take um, 18 to 24 weeks, and so a lot of the a lot of I know there's a high demand for barns right now. Um, the prices reflect it. The amount of time that it takes to get started reflects it. And so, uh, so we had other ideas. Uh, and so we're gonna run over to a, a little neighboring city to where, kind of close to where we live. It's about 15 minutes away. And they build um, sheds. Uh, the the kind of sheds that, they're not what I would consider to be Home Depot sheds where they're kind of flimsily built. Uh, they're really not, um, you know, there's some elements about them that you look for to make sure that they are quality buildings and this little place looks like they do them so we're gonna run over here take a look at I don't know something like a 14 by 30 you know somewhere in that neighborhood type of a building that will give us uh, the um, the room that we need uh, to store a lot of our stuff that's kind of the real biggie right now uh, as many of you know we're transitioning from the city out to the country we're going green acre style and we've got several uh, we got several units uh, storage units that we're that we've got all of our stuff in and as we begin to transition out we need a place where we can store all that stuff so that we can kind of sort through it and figure out what we need to keep and what we don't uh, it's also a place where we can keep all of my woodworking stuff and whatnot until we get the barn built. So, um, we're going out today to a place called 10K Barns, and we're going to take a look at uh, what they got, talk to some of their people. So, come along, let's go do this. All right. Now we're going to go in here and talk to the young lady and uh, see what we can get ourselves into. Maybe show you guys kind of what we're looking at. Let's do this. Thirty-two, eight foot longer. Yeah. Eight foot long. I wish we had one on the lot. A lot of people like to look at those, but we have it. They go. Right? I, I thought she said this was espresso. Espresso. This. I thought she was saying this. She said trim. It's, what is it? Is there an espresso on there at all? <clears throat> no, this is roof color. Okay, thanks. I'm with you. I think this was espresso. Now, I don't know what this is. And whatever this is, same color as the doors. comes with the shelving on that side? No, no, that's the. That's an upgrade if y'all want that. I don't think we want that. Okay. Because I think. I'll call Jason Monday and make sure he knows. Whew. <laughs> okay, so basically we could have bought the house for $10,000. Is that what you're saying? I think, yeah, we just. <laughs> okay. As much so, time we spent on the house, we could have bought it for $10,000. I'll let you explain what we've done here because. Uh, well, I don't know that I know what we've done here. Because I'm, yeah, I'm a little, like, perplexed at the fact that we, I think we, I think we tore up about five contracts <laughs> just trying to get the color and everything down. And so what did we end up buying? What's, what's going to be, <laughs> what's actually going to be delivered we got a, a 14 by 40 wood carriage house looking shed. <laughs> carriage house looking. It's going to have a four foot porch. Yes, a four foot timber frame porch on it. So it's in it actually going to be 44 feet wide, or long and 14 foot wide. And it's coming in a silver maple which kind of looks like a taupe <laughs> and 
And then the shutters and the doors are gonna be a, a, a dark brown color, even though it says burnished slate, it's gonna be brown. Um, it's gonna have uh, doors on the side, like big doors so that you can... Carriage house doors. Yeah, the carriage house doors, but it's also on the porch side, it's gonna have a regular door. My man door, yeah. So, that's basically what we've got. It's, so we it should almost, be able to get our storage sheds pretty taken care of. So it's almost going to look like a, a small cabin, a small carriage house barn type cabin. And um, man, it's going to have lots of storage. 40 foot long. Uh, it's should, as long as our house. Yeah, it, it'll be the same length as our house. And so and we'll, over half the size of the width. Of that's right. House. So yes, we we could have built our house should have been able to build our house for one tenth of what we built it we could have got a double wide <laughs> for twenty thousand dollars yeah so uh so no but you know obviously we understand that's not that's not home oh, home quality no, but not. uh but it is it's still very nice it is a very very nice i mean they've done a phenomenal they uh, uh these are built by some um uh, some amish families uh, in Coleman, Alabama, and uh, and so we uh, we feel really good about the quality, uh, the, the craftsmanship, um, really beautiful buildings, which is really you know a, some of what we're paying for is the aesthetic beauty of what we're adding to our farm. So it's not just functional, but it's the you know it's it's what we get um, uh, from a look as well. And I think the look of this, I went in with a complete vision of one thing and what we ended up buying was nowhere close to what nowhere close nowhere close but i, I really like it uh, i think it's going to be really beautiful so there you have it uh over the next month i think the delivery is is within a month cow loving going on yeah. sorry <laughs> don't show that <laughs> <laughs> wow uh <laughs> so over the next month uh they will uh get our uh, our shed built and they will get it um, delivered uh, and set up. So they come out and do all the land prepped, everything. They come out and get it level. So we will have a, uh, a place for all of our storage um, here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll keep you posted on that. But how exciting uh, we got our, uh, we got our first, our first additional piece of structure on the farm uh, we got it purchased and we'll have a big reveal here in a few weeks well all right that's gonna wrap it up here uh, at the little orchard farm this week we sure do glad uh, we sure do glad we sure are glad uh, that you joined us we hope you have a wonderful week it's yeah, it's uh awesome. it's uh easter weekend so we hope that you've had a blessed uh weekend in um uh, celebrating our risen lord and uh, we hope that you guys have a wonderful week and we until we see you again the next time we will see you see ya.